Hello everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick right here, dropping in on you. Uh, I'm not going to be that long, leaving the office, got some things to do. Got a lot on my mind, honestly. Um, but, I want to take some time and share with you guys uh, just a bit of what drives me and my passion. Um, don't forget that we are in the middle of a fundraiser, um, a targeted fundraiser for the organization, specifically targeted at raising funds to facilitate some in the workings for the Black Men Lead Right of Passage Initiative. Um, there's so many things going on that uh, support the notion that we really need to amplify our work with our young Black males. Your support in this area will be greatly appreciated. You know, I'm often asked with everything that I do and everything that I have on my plate as a business owner, as a, a husband, as a father, why do I take on the challenges of the black community, especially when it seems as if I don't get a whole lot of support? Uh, you know, I get a lot of requests for interviews. I get a lot of requests for people, for people wanting me to participate and do a bunch of things with them, for them or whatever. Um, so in that sense, people acknowledge and know who I am and they respect who I am or they would not be seeking me out. But when we talk about support, uh, we're talking about people who actually get behind you, what you're doing and underwrite it. And I, I've been asked, why do I do it? What's the passion? Uh, I was reared by my great grandparents. Matter of fact, my grandmother's parents. A lot of you heard this story before. Hang tight. A lot, you know, my, my grandparents, my grandmother's parents reared me. So uh, my grandmother, the mother of my mother, her parents reared me. They adopted me when I was two years old. They had me from the age of nine months. Officially, legally adopted me uh, when I was two. And, I, you know, I often tease my mom and my grandmother, you know, you know, I'm your sister. I mean, you're my sister, uh, you know, and tell my mom I'm your uncle. Um, you know, just jokingly, you know, but on a serious note, being reared by your great grandparents comes with benefits and it also comes with some challenges. Obviously there's the age gap uh, where the connectivity suffers because the times are so different from when they were a child and you are a child that they may not be truly adept in helping you cope and adopt as you grow because it was simple, simply different in their time and their era of what they were facing, you know, just like, you know, we had to make a, adaptations and we had to adopt in how we parented based off of social media. We didn't have social media when we were growing up. We didn't have it as a challenge and we have to gain an understanding of it. Our it can negatively impact our capacity to parent our children. Well, they had the same problems, just different things. So, but here, here, here's something that I did get from my grandfather. My grandfather at the age of seven, I want you to really get this. At the age of seven, my grandfather had to leave school, second grade, and go out in the fields and help his father, who was a sharecropper, work the fields uh, to increase productivity so they could just break even and they could keep food on the table and a roof over their head. 
so needless to say, he was significantly literate, uh, functionally literate, functionally illiterate, meaning he couldn't read at a very high level. Uh, and so that created some challenges for him. He grew up in a time in the South uh, where Jim Crow was at its height. Yet my grandfather found a way to keep his, his manhood intact and to demand respect of all those who he encountered, regardless of race. And my grandfather taught me that the way that you become impactful is living outside of yourself. <laughs> One of the things he told me, among many, is that you always fill your space. And I said, well, daddy, what does that mean? He said, never walk into a room and leave people the way you found them. Make your presence felt, fill your space. You're gift he told me, you're gifted enough that you're gonna eat. It may be rough for you sometimes, but you're gonna eat. You're gonna eat better than I ever ate. But, but it's not just about you. And then he would point out, without pointing out, he had this unbelievable ability to do this, point out without pointing out specifically. But he was pointing out how he had made impacts in the lives of other people that while he had an unbelievable life story of a person who came out of sharecropping and eventually ended up over owning his own company but retired as a master welder from a company he started as a janitor at without ever going to school for welding, just simply being able to work with other master welders and be taught and become an apprentice and then become a master welder and retire from a all rig building company called Dresser Clark Industries, which I think is Dresser Rand now, which eventually became a client of mine, which is kind of crazy. Became a client of mine when I was doing international relocation, I told you that. But uh, he worked for them and retired, got a 30 year pen and all of that, and then still had the wherewithal to own his own business to end his life on his terms in, this, in that sense. But that was a story in of itself, where he came from, what he was able to do, how he overcame the odds and all that was great. But it was the things that he had did for other people. Like when we would go back to his hometown in Louisiana, Northern Louisiana, and we were walking to this place. Now this is Louisiana. We're talking the South and we're talking in Louisiana. And he would walk into these businesses owned by white people. And I would look at the level of respect that he had. And I would ask, him a simple question with so many white people that didn't like black people how did you get them to respect you he said I was willing to die for what I believed and I was willing to take as many with me as I could in the process I didn't start much but I was willing to finish anything that came my way he told me that same principle don't go out starting shit with people boy but if they started with you make them wish they hadn't and but he planted in me this seed that your greatness will depend upon how far outside of yourself you're willing to live because you can go out and do some unbelievable stuff and have an unbelievable life for yourself but is that where you want it to end or do you want your legacy to be that you came and you changed things, not only for yourself, for others. And that is a commitment I made to myself long ago, before he passed away. He passed away when I was 25. Long before that, I made up in my mind, but definitely after I lost him in 1992, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna live my life in a way that if he is observing, he'll be proud. But I'm also gonna live my life in a way that others who follow me, my progeny, will have something that they can stand on, something that they can operate from. So I'm not just doing it for the people in the community. I love my people. 
I'm doing it because I'm representing something that matters to me. I'm doing it because there's a seed inside of me. I'm doing it because I want to leave something behind that's bigger than me. I want my legacy to say I touched lives. I fought, I stood, I would not fold, I did not compromise. I never sold my people out. Martin Luther King, I'm gonna say this then I'm done. Martin Luther King says that a man that does not have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live. I ride with that, I get it, I'm good. So this is why I do what I do. This is why I fight through uh, the things I fight through. This is why I stand the way I stand because I'm living for something bigger than what can be seen right now. And uh, my colleague and friend has told me for years, I mean, years and years, say, Doc, I'm afraid, my biggest, he said, my biggest fear, fear when it comes to you is that people won't realize who you are until after you're gone. And my response religiously is, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I know who I am. I don't need the validation. I don't need anybody to tell me who I am. I don't need nobody to big up me. Uh, I know who I am. I'm good with leaving a legacy that people go, whoa. Man, I didn't know. Man, wow. I, I, I'm good with that. I don't need it myself. I don't need nobody to stroke my ego. But I do want to leave a legacy because, see, that legacy will speak and it will resound within the hearts and the minds of my progeny, my children, their children, and their children. That means a lot to me. So for those that ask, you know, why well, keep doing it? That's why I do it. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Like I said, if you want to support the work I do, information's in the des uh, description box. But I'm uh, I'm going to get out of here, got to stop until I make, and then I'm going to head to the house today. All right, I'm out.